Underground fights with no rules. Two big guys are beating each other to get the jackpot. Carter Ford is coming off his sixth win in a row, and the pot has grown to an impressive size. All you have to do to win the jackpot is beat Carter. A willing fighter is found. The Dark Horse prepares to fight. However, Carter recognizes him and immediately refuses to fight. He's willing to lose all his money, but he's definitely not willing to get in the ring with Dalton. He has no choice but to take his winnings and leave. On the street, an unhappy spectator meets him and sticks a knife in his side, but when he meets a cold stare, he drops the knife and runs away. While the guy pulls out the knife and treats the wound, a girl named Frankie approaches him. She owns a small roadside restaurant, but lately the establishment has been attracting the wrong crowd. Every night the thugs come in and trash the place. The bouncers have scattered, the cops can't help, so she wants to hire Dalton to restore order, but the man refuses. He gets into an old car, and the girl only manages to slip him a piece of paper with her cell phone number. When Dalton sees a closed barrier ahead, he stops the car right at the crossing. Life doesn't make him happy, so ending it also an option, but at the last moment, the guy changes his mind and barely manages to get off the road, even though the train still demolishes half of the car. His eyes fall on a piece of paper with a number on it. The girl offers 20000 for one month month. That might be enough to make things better. Dalton's first impression of the bar is a good one, a large establishment on the edge of the sea and palm trees. Thatched roof and tropical hut style, all peaceful and dignified. He meets the staff, orders Cuban coffee, and just waits. In the evening, the atmosphere in the bar changes. Debauchery, fights, a young bouncer barely able to cope with drunken customers. And a little later, the same biker gang shows up. The leader immediately starts causing trouble, which attracts Dalton's attention. He politely asks the hooligans to leave the bar and goes outside himself. Unhappy with the insolence of a man who is practically dead, Dell and his gang go after him. Dalton immediately asks if they have health insurance and if the hospital is far from here. Unable to listen any longer, Dell lunges at the stranger. Literally 30 seconds pass, and here Dalton is already asking his boss for a car to take the poor guys to the hospital. A nurse at the hospital notices blood on his side. She asks Dalton to let her treat the wound. Seeing that the knife wound is open, the man allows her to bandage it. He then returns to the roadhouse. He doesn't notice that he's being followed by a nondescript car. After talking to the owner of the bar, Dalton is allowed to stay on a boat that is moored near the bar and also belongs to Frankie. At night, Dalton dreams of the past. He performs in a UFC ring and a huge audience applauds him. The dream is interrupted by an employee of the bar. She brings him breakfast and tells him that people like him have come to the bar before, but none of them lasted long. The girl hopes this time will be different. Later, walking down the street, Dalton realizes that he has become a local celebrity. Everyone greets him, everyone says hello. At this point, the gang he beat up the night before reports to their leader Brand on an expensive yacht. He is very unhappy that his plan to demolish a roadhouse has been disrupted by a visiting bone crusher. Another working day at the bar begins to heat up. A group singing on stage does not suit the drunken visitor with their repertoire, so he does not tolerate it and immediately decides to say everything he thinks about it. The singer is protected by a stretched net, but passions rage, word by word, and two drunken jocks are already fighting in front of the stage. Dalton teaches his young co-worker that one has a knife under his shirt. As soon as he pulls it out, take a step back and strike. By doing everything as instructed, the guy only angers the drunken bully, who throws himself back into the fight. But Dalton intercepts the hand with the knife. There is a crunch, a scream, and the bouncer has the knife, and all the rebels are thrown out of the bar. The next day, Dalton sees a small tray outside a bar, where a tough guy with scarred hands works. When Dalton finds out that this is the result of his boxing lessons, he hires him as a second bouncer at the bar. Now there are two young guys in the bar, who are pretty good at dealing with tipsy hooligans, and Dalton trains them in their specialty, teaching them and watching the results. After all, he doesn't just want to clean up the bar, he wants it to thrive after he's gone. After saying goodbye to another customer, Dalton sees bikers watching him and the bar from a distance. A moment later, they leave, and the bouncer returns to the bar. In his dream, Dalton is back in the UFC ring. He is defiant and disrespectful to his opponent. We see Dalton take a real beating. Another shift at the bar passes without incident, and the man decides to walk home. On the bridge, he is hit by a jeep driven by one of the bikers. After falling into the water, Dalton gets out and walks to his boat, where the same biker is waiting for him, but with a sawed-off shotgun. A struggle ensues during which the biker falls overboard, but he has no time to climb back. The poor man is attacked by a crocodile, and Dalton finds himself helpless in his zeal to save his killer.
killer. After this accident, Dalton begins to wonder what kind of business he has screwed up. A man with a gun approaches him on the street and asks him to get into his car. His boss, Brand, wants to talk to Dalton. The gun doesn't scare the bouncer. Dalton breaks a couple of fingers of the man's hand, and he can't threaten with the gun anymore. Dalton assures him that the hospital is only 25 minutes away and that the boss should come to the roadhouse if he wants to talk. Later, he pays a visit to his employer, Frankie, to find out why the local thugs are after the roadhouse, but he gets no answers. Meanwhile, Brand sits on his yacht, disgruntled. He doesn't understand how a newcomer can scatter all his men and push them away from their desired goal. In the next scene, we see a naked Atlantean with tattoos. Knox has jumped out of his mistress's bed into the street to avoid being seen by her arriving husband. Not at all embarrassed by his appearance, he strides confidently through the narrow streets, flashing his tools. With an absolutely happy smile, he enters the crowded market in search of suitable clothes. And whose fault is it that the jacket he likes is already occupied by someone else's body? He had to knock the guy out to get the cool jacket. He's the one Brand's father calls to solve the problem with the new bouncer. A nurse from the hospital asks Dalton out on a date. Well, she takes him to a sandbank where they sit on deck chairs, drink beer, and chat casually. But the man pulls away as soon as the girl tries to ask him about his past. But she doesn't give in. She tells him that she learned everything from the internet a long time ago, but she doesn't want anything to spoil this date. The couple kisses. The crazy Atlant is already speeding away in his sports car. He arrives at the Brand's house and educates some gang members, which ends very badly for them. When Brand arrives, Knox punches him in the face as a message from his father, and also dictates his routines and future rules to him. When the date is over, the nurse takes the guy back to shore, where the local cops are already waiting for him. They take him to the local sheriff, who orders the man to leave the area. When he refuses, he orders his subordinates to pull Dalton out of the car. After kicking him a bit, the sheriff puts a gun to his head, but has no time to shoot. A car flies up to them, and a nurse jumps out, walks up to the sheriff, and slaps him in the face. After picking up Dalton, she drives off. On the way, the girl explains to the discouraged man that the sheriff is her father. She also tells him that the town is run by a father and son, and she suspects that the sheriff is working for his son, Brand, because daddy is smoking in jail. Which means that Dalton really has to leave for his own safety. The bandits are determined. Their plans include destroying a bookstore owned by Dalton's friends. It should be a warning to the bouncer. Dalton arrives at work in the evening. Brand sits down with him. He shows a video of Dalton in the ring killing his opponent, and asks why he he didn't stop earlier. Without an answer, Brand leaves. On the porch, a happy Knox and a gang of bikers are waiting for him. After receiving the order to destroy everything, he goes to the bar with a smile on his face. Dancing to upbeat music, he starts breaking glass on the tables with a golf club, but Dalton doesn't care. The young bouncers try to calm the madman down, but their attempts only tease him. The other bikers join in, and in a moment, the debauchery spreads throughout the bar. Knox, however, needs Dalton. He calls out to him until the guy doesn't answer. A fierce fight ensues between the two, which Dalton unfortunately loses. Eventually, covered in blood, the guy gets to his feet and simply leaves the bar, followed a short time later by Knox and his goons. Dalton packs his stuff on his boat. His employer, Frankie, comes and tells the man that she hasn't been honest with him from the beginning, that Brand wants to take the bar away from her, but Dalton isn't interested. He admits to the girl that he's really scared and that she really hired the wrong guy. After that, the guy leaves the pier. On his way to the bus stop, he sees the charred ruins of a bookstore. After learning that his friends are in the hospital, he sees his bus depart and decides to stay. Dalton goes straight to Brand's house to visit the bikers. The first biker he meets dies from a broken neck. After the second biker tells him where and when to find their boss, Dalton picks up the body and rides to his boat. Now it's time for action. After spotting a sheriff's deputy on the shore carrying a bag full of money to his boat, Dalton takes his gun, puts several bullets into the corpse of a biker he brought with him, and knocks the cop out. After framing one of the unscrupulous werewolves in uniform, Dalton returns to his boat. A little later, the corrupt sheriff pays him a visit. He informs him that his daughter has been kidnapped by Brand, and if Dalton doesn't return all the money, the girl will be dead by noon. Dalton agrees to help. To do so, he picks up the boat the nurse used to take him on a date. Her ex-boyfriend, the owner of the boat, only agreed because he felt the bouncer wouldn't take no for an answer. Meanwhile, the cheerful Knox arrives at Brand's house, but finds no one there. Meanwhile, Dalton approaches Brand's yacht. On board, he sees Brand and a satisfied sheriff. During the conversation,
conversation, Brand admits that the girl was kidnapped after all. The sheriff's face changes, of course, but Dalton keeps everyone on their toes. He uses the remote control to blow up the boat on which he arrived with the money, and when he came to his senses from the nearby explosion, he sees that the big yacht is also damaged and was tilting, taking on water overboard. Knox flies on a rubber motorboat, happy and ruthless as always. Dalton rescues the girl and tells her to swim to another boat while he tries to avoid being hit by Knox's motorboat. The girl makes it to the lifeboat, but Brand is already there. He abruptly takes off and rushes to shore with the girl. Dalton is left alone with the crazy Knox, and he has an advantage. He is in the boat, not in the water like the bouncer. During the struggle, Dalton climbs into Knox's motorboat and throws him overboard. While chasing Brand, he sees him turn and run towards him, trying to ram the dinghy. He succeeds, and after a head-on collision, Dalton flies over to his boat. A struggle ensues on board, but as the boat approaches the shore at full speed, the girl and Dalton manage to jump into the water. Brand is less fortunate, and as the speedboat flies out onto the terrace of the roadhouse, Brand himself flies 10 meters onto the roof of the establishment. Dalton has no intention of letting him go. He finds him in the wreckage of the boat and proceeds to punish him. What about Knox? He swims to the bridge and gets onto the highway. After stealing a jeep from some poor guy, he runs up to the bar and crashes into the wall, knocking out the fighters. Getting out from behind the airbag, Knox lunges at Dalton. A brutal fight ensues. Eventually, Dalton begins to give in, and at one point, Knox stabs him in the left side with a sharp wooden stake. He picks up the second piece and decides to finish what he started, but Bran jumps out and screams at him to finish his work. Knox snaps the screamer's neck in cold blood and returns to Dalton. Gathering all his will in his fist, the bouncer not only manages to defend himself, but also pulls the stake out of his body and takes the second one away from Knox. With two long pieces of stake, he literally pierces the scumbag until the remnants of life leave the crazy Irish body. It was this bloody guy over the dead enemy that the nurse arrived in time to see. The guy only had time to say, I'm sorry. The approaching sheriff asks the bouncer to leave as soon as possible, and he'll take care of covering for him. The girl agrees with her father. Dalton has no choice but to listen to her and leaves. Next, we see the staff repairing a damaged roadhouse, and the friends, a girl and her father, rebuilding their bookstore. By the way, Dalton didn't blow up the bag of money with the boat. He left it for the girl's father in the bookstore, but he doesn't even get a chance to thank him. He jumps out into the street, but all he sees is a bus in the distance. The hero has left town. Thank you watching folks, hope you liked it. You can check another interesting recaps in the channel. Don't get left behind. Join me for best movie recaps. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Goodbye till the next recap.